fuck. What? My oh, glasses. Go get it. Uh, <laughs> the old setup. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Fuck, I can't do this episode without glasses in front of me on the table. Oh, man. He was legit worried, too, bro. <laughs> He's like, fuck! <laughs> like, if you got to pick up Jordan from school. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, I fucked up, guy. The other day, I because I get there at 2.30, and I just park the car in the front, and I sleep for a half an hour because she doesn't get to, like, 3, 3.05. And then um, I was sleeping, and someone was knocking on the window. What the fuck? It woke me up. He said, bro, like... Then he saw a point of the gates open already. I almost missed, <laughs> missed picking her up. Fell, fell asleep in the car. Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. Like, I would have woke up and the only car there. <laughs> she just still staying there. Dark yeah. and narcolepsy. Oh, my oh, gosh. The car epilepsy. <laughs> no, we're live, bro. Are we live, but are we in living color? We're live. What the fuck? Welcome to... <laughs> The ESJ podcast show. We are live. So I heard. <laughs> We're live now, but when you watch it, we won't be. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully, you won't be dead. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Me you'll be that? live. We'll all be live. Alive. Let's I don't know. <laughs> Let's hope so. It's a- I feel like it's only like Christopher Walken's right there. Alive. <laughs> Christopher well, Walken. Let's hope you're alive. Oh, <laughs> alive. <geez. laughs> Oh, we don't want any more death. We're on the holidays. I got something uh, that came. I thought it was very interesting. I wanted to read it to you guys. I, I sent it to you also, but it's a fan that watches a podcast, <laughs> right? And it's, he's saying, Buenos tardes, Edwin. I saw your podcast from today, and I get it. I was on your side of understanding the whole convo between both. Low key, I see bad energy there that you don't need, dot, dot, dot. Homeboy in the back is solid. <laughs> and this is after uh, the single parent episode. Yes. Now, right. I wanted to say something because Krasner was playing the role right there. I mean, he's not like that person. but Oh, yeah. you ain't got to do no statement, bro. It's not a statement, but I'm just saying a compliment because when someone does something really good, you end up hating them. Like when I watch a movie <laughs> and then I see a bad villain there and I don't hate that guy, I, I step back and go, fuck, he's an amazing actor because oh, yeah, he made yeah. me like – fall into this thing and hate him. Like Gladiator, um, um, the guy who plays Marcus Cerulius, um, um, Joaquin Phoenix. Right. I hated him, bro, and like for the passion, but he's such a good actor. Like, he is, man. He's a great actor, bro. Right. So like this guy's like thinking Krasner's like <laughs> fucking negative energy and stuff, but I understand something. He's getting, he's playing that role. You know what I mean? Because you're like one of the nicest guys I know. Like you're not... So it's a compliment to what you were doing. It's that's why fu- it's funny because that's like how I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but like that's how my mom was with Brian Dennehy. Do you know Brian yeah, Dennehy, like the, the cop, sheriff from, from, the sheriff from, from Rambo. Rambo? Yeah. So she watched Rambo, green. and then she was always a Stallone fan. So like, ever since that came out, she always hated Brian Dennehy. <laughs> like, oh, no, to the, like years later, every time you bring him up, she'd be like, "Oh fuck that guy!" I'm like, "Mom, why do you hate him?" And she's like, "Because he was a dick to Rambo." I'm like, "Mom." That, that was in the movie. He was supposed to be. And I'm, oh, that's what shit. I said. I'm like, he's obviously he did a great job as an actor if for you to him still hate him. Right. To even when he died a couple years ago, right. I had texted my mom, I'm like, oh, Brian Dennehy he died. And she wrote back, good, finally got what he deserved. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, Stallone was probably at the funeral. Like he, <laughs> If he can give up and oh, let it go, shit. you can. But she yeah. just wouldn't let it go. So <laughs> I, that's kind of like a part of what you're saying. Yeah. But he, I think he was a great actor, but he had the same cause body. His body never changed. He's always been that guy. You yeah, know he what always I mean? he's always looked exactly the same. But he's been like FX. Like he was the uh, he always plays a cop role or something, you know. But Tommy Boy, he was all comedy yeah, and this and that. that was so good too. So I think his being a dick to Rambo days were behind him by then, but <laughs> not according to my mom. Jesus. Nothing will, no one will hold a grudge more than an older Jewish woman, I tell you. <laughs> well, it's all perception and how people see things, and then people think that there's negative energy or weird people. And then, like, we live here in Vegas, but then you go just like an hour away or two hours away at Pahrump. Oh, yeah. And it's a whole nother town, right? It seems like you're like, like, 
I, I haven't even been there, but I've heard stories about Pahrump. Like we were driving there, and I was saying to Sean, I'm like, it feels like a in-state road gig. Yeah, he's, yeah, okay. he did say that. Yeah, yeah, you drive like in, it's just about an hour, so it's it's a little bit of a road trip. Now, what is it about the people over there that it's like so weird? Like because I, an hour this way, like Boulder or past that, that you don't you don't get that type of. Like, I really wish I knew what it was. Yeah, it's, just like, it's like a whole separate. It's just the energy, bro. Like how you're talking about energy. It's yeah, amazing yeah. how you can be an hour away from someplace and they're just completely. Different. Like different people like like they're very political over there and like certain things like i guess they're what re- they're like trump people or they're like republicans yeah, yeah. so were you wearing was it like you were wearing your obama socks or something like that no, at the gas but- station and they saw you they <laughs> not that like- time but the last time i was there i was showing my obama socks oh and, and then, then he like, talked he, about it I on hear, stage yeah, though and i then- hear from like 10 feet behind me and are those was- obama socks <laughs> and i was like oh, you, it's like in the movie when you hear that gulp uh, wait so you did it on stage well this time when i was there you talked I, I about what happened last me- time i don't remember what i was talking about yeah. but i mentioned someone yelled obama from the oh i think i was talking about homeless people with cell phones okay and i was like how did that happen and then somebody yelled obama because i guess remember you hear all those people they're like oh it's my obama phone like that, right. you know that so i guess obama had a program where he was giving away like lower cost cell phones to underprivileged people or homeless people and stuff like that so i think that's what he was talking about and then he said obama so i brought up the obama Sunk. story and, mm-hmm. and then they all just looked at me like i was fucking crazy so <laughs> and then you thought you were gonna kill but it obama <laughs> it, 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 it obamed <laughs> and then two the only two black people there Right, we're yelling back at me from stage, you know, like they "fuck the, Obama." Damn, they were the ones I was heckling him. It was so good. The two black people were anti-Obama because I thought it was the drunk white dude at the bar because he was heckling me and he was heckling like there was a group of thirteen people. They were Bro. all there from Home Depot. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah I guess man. Rob had addressed that in the beginning of the show, but I didn't hear it. Because the one dude at the bar was like, Fuck Home Depot! <laughs> Lowe's for life! <laughs> like just heckling ridiculous things, so... Fucking Home Depot crowd. It's hot in here, right? Home Depot! You know, it's just not dudes with women. When he started... Yeah. When the Obama thing started yelling, I, I would have bet up. Everything I had that it was that angry drunk white dude in the back saying fuck Obama. But How did it, you find out it wasn't? And it was Shauna there. told me. Yeah, oh. because well, Sean gives you false information about black people in the crowd. That is true, <laughs> but he has a history. Because there was a white dude, the white dude who was yelling fuck Lowe's and fuck Home Depot. Mm. He was heckling at some point too. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. everybody get heckled, or was it just you? Um, no, we I mean, all we all got like a little bit of it. But see, the strange thing: how many was, people were in the crowd? It was about 40, I would say. Uh-huh. Yeah, about give 40. Or, give or take. Because cause, cause Stoner goes up there and he's like, you know what? Like I've been I've been hosting here all the time. They know my material. He's like, I'm going to just mess around with them. And he just did crowd work the whole time. So he like interviewed every single person, bro. So then like when like because of that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like they were like, like they'll just shout out random shit. So even during like all of our sets. But it's a, like it's almost like a bar show anyways, bro. Was he killing saying? doing it or was he that sounds like a lot of people, bro. That sounds like a long ass show. Yeah, it well, did, the it, was the three man, it was the three man show. Forty people, we, we, and he's asking everybody, like, "Yeah, where you from? What do you do?" But it was good though because if he didn't do that, we we wouldn't have known about the Home Depot people. You know okay, what I'm saying? Because right, we yeah. all got to play off of that because they were the most fire part of the whole like. Yeah, crowd. they were a group of thirteen. So you take that away, and that cuts the crowd in like third. You ever try to get hope at help at Home Depot? You can never find an employee. I know that's because they're always at the bar. They're all getting shit faced. (laughs) Is that the only like this? Prump is not a small, big town, so they probably only have one Home Depot, and they probably got one of everything, bro. Yeah. The, well, that was like that was the thing, man. Because like, we went out there and like at first we didn't even know it was gonna be like a, a whole lot of people or not, right? Right. Like, my first time doing that show, it was fire, man. Like it was like a good ass crowd and like it was chill and it felt like a club, like like you know what I'm saying, like you was performing at like a show and then like this time. It was just like the complete different like yeah, it was just mindset. Kind of like a rowdy bro. bar show because when you do, he opened up and did about twenty five minutes and it was strictly crowd work. Yeah. Oh man! So once you do that, that kind of the crowd thinks they get the green light to yeah. yell back and yeah. shit like that. And 
we we've all done bar shows, so we're used to people yelling. Sometimes you yeah, ignore it. Sometimes it, you address it or whatever. But there's never a rhythm established, huh? Yeah, it's just yeah. going off that. Because like Sean went up, he did good. He did a little bit, not crowd work, but like address the crowd and stuff like that. Talk to the group of yeah, a little uh, bit. The group of thirteen was calling them the last supper table and shit. What a weird fucking show. I'm going to have to say that right off the bat. What a weird show. Especially for those of you that this is your first time here. Welcome. It was weird. Like, I was standing back there. I was like, man, we're performing literally for like the Last Supper. Like, that's what I really thought. And then uh, when I went up, I started doing like a little riffing because Rob was doing this sexy dance for some girl oh, singing happy birthday God. and shit. Happy birthday to Oh, wow. Rob was about to bring up Kraz like eight <laughs> times, dog. Oh, man. Yeah, it's like, you guys ready? You guys ready for your handler? And then you get sidetracked. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Don't you fucking yell during my show. The fuck? All right. Let's bring up your headliner. Hey, sure? hey, hey, we'll do the book club later. All right. Are you guys ready for your headliner? All right. It's the time. Are you ready for your headliner? Let me in. I'm like walking up and then slowly walking back, sitting back down. <laughs> walking up and slowly walking back down. Oh, you guys ready for your head? Have just you tried the doing, new Blue Dorito? Just oh, kept doing shit. more crowd work and shit. So, so I went up funny, and I did like, bro. I opened up with a little bit of crowd work and shit like that, but. <laughs> Fucking started Rob singing happy birthday all sexual like marijuana Monroe. <laughs> 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 So I did about 25, almost 30 minutes. Yeah, but it, he wasn't tripping, bro. I mean, shit, man. This man got cashed out, dog. He oh fucking, yeah, he hit pretty fucking big, man. He was teaching me how to play like video poker and shit. Bro. Oh shit! Mm-hmm. And then like he was like, yeah, man, you know, he's like, you just you know, gotta get these like deuces wild and stuff, right? And then I was like, oh, that's what's up. And then he, and then like I walk over to like talk to Stoner, cause he was talking to this dude, bro. He's talking to this dude oh, that fuck. had had like um he couldn't like drink, bro. Like like something happened like in his throat or some shit, right? Uh-huh. So like he had a uh, uh, like this device that was like is like basically like an IV. You pour whatever you want to drink and it goes directly into your stomach. Oh wow! So this dude was getting fucked up, bro, because it was like it was because it goes straight in, like you know, it yeah. doesn't right to the source. Yeah, right to the source. It's like bro. Dumping fucking alcohol on your liver. <laughs> it was wild. I was, I was like, I never seen anything like that. I was like, oh shit. And then like them too. That couple was like fire. They loved the comedy. Like they love stand up, bro. So like they had a great time and shit, man. And then like. And then Kranz calls him back and he's like, hey, bro, he's like, you remember I told you you want those, like, those deuces and wilds and stuff? I was like, yeah. He's like, just like this. And, like, he hit all four and then, like, fucking just racked it up on that. So, Dang. Yeah, and then he was asking me, he was like, you want again? I was like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. And then, like, as we were going to the bathroom, bro, like, you're ready for the show? Like, they had, like, a claw machine and they had, like, all these arcade games and shit. And then Kranz was like, yeah, this is where you blow your money, huh? <laughs> you, know how, you know, every time we go do a gig together, Sean's like, yo, we gotta go find an arcade, bro. We gotta go find an arcade. <laughs> we walk in here and there's, like, arcade games with, like, all these fucking boner. claw things, all oh, Sean's shit. favorite things. His son's really good at it. Uh, so he's like, after the show, this is where you'll find me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then sure as shit, after the show, he played and... Dog. I got robbed. Fucking, bro. he got robbed. Like, I got robbed. Big remember time. the great like, like all those Bonnie and Clyde fucking bank robberies. Yeah, nothing compared to what Sean had to fucking deal with. <laughs> Dog, How much so, did you put in there, bro? Well, not he. Sh- no, nah, he fucking. It was like five. He, I gave him five singles. Guy changed on me. He gave me a five. I gave him five singles. And, yeah. So he only, he only played five dollars. Yeah, but but no, he won I, twice. But like, bro, like the the. The prize that I want, I'm a big South Park fan, right? So right. I love South Park. And Tally is literally my favorite character. Yeah, the Indian right? guy wanted oh, the okay. towel. <laughs> yeah, Tally. so like, so they had a Tally plush, right? And I was like, oh man, I want to win that. And you get to stack these blocks to go all the way to the top. 
So I get midpoint, then it's like, do you want to select a prize now or do you want to continue and go for the bonus? Like, yeah, double or nothing. You're a minor and a major. Right? All right. All right. And so I stacked all the blocks all the way to the top, bro. And then it says, so there's a button that says select your prize. And then there's another button that says go, right? Mm -hmm. And like, it's tricky because me, when I hear select, that means like, that's what you're going to, like, if I press that button, that's the prize that's going to fall, right? right. Uh -huh. But for them, they use the word select as in like decision making, like go and cycle through the prizes with this button. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh -huh. Well, like my dumb ass didn't figure that out and I was pressing it and, but nothing was like switching though. So we were trying to read the instructions and boom. I ran out of time to select my prize, bro. They gave me the very first thing that was it was already highlighted on, and it was a free domestic beer. <laughs> oh, and I don't oh, even drink, bro. Right. So it's like, oh, dude, the Rob, the, like, <laughs> like, like you should you should see the video. Like he has the video, like, dog. It's got Sean winning and doing the thing and getting it. it yeah. Then he wins and he's like, oh shit! And like the, the machine starts blinking and it says win all digital. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, fuck yeah, like all excited. And he's trying to pick the prize. And then the free voucher for a domestic beer <laughs> fucking hit. The only thing Sean couldn't do, because he doesn't fucking drink or right. doesn't care. And he's a comic right. on the show. He gets free drinks if right. he wanted one. So like, the only fucking thing, it would be like if I had all this shit and mustard had popped out. Like the one thing I'm not going right. to fucking use. Oh, so that's what they were giving you regard. Uh, and you just so see like the defeat in show. And, and, and I'm like laughing, but also like sympathizing at the same <laughs> time. Like I felt so bad. Oh, yeah. But it was still fucking funny. <laughs> and then when I was like, you know what? The I was like, build up. Bro, I, oh. I, I was so heartbroken though that I went, I went and I was like, yo, let me talk to the management. Like Kraz was like, yo, talk to him and see if they could probably like open it up and give you the prize. So I told the lady, I was like, the bartender, I go, Yo, I, I actually select the wrong prize by one. Like, here's proof. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she goes to the other manager, and then they're like, oh, it's not even our machines, bro. Like, we can't even help you. And I was like, fuck, bro. I was like, what am I going to do, right? And then, like, Kraz looks down the bar. He goes, hey, man. He's like, give it to that dude that, that uses that, that device to get himself drunk. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he bought merch. Yeah, he you was know dumping his belly button. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, he was like, he got merch and shit. Like, you know? And I was like, all right. So, we go over. They're the only people drinking anyways. Right. right. And then, like, I gave them the thing. They were, like, super appreciated, dog. We, got, we made fans, bro. You know what oh, I'm nice. saying? We made fans in Pahrump, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones you want to get. Oh, man. It was a fun show, but it was an interesting show. Um, and then... Bro, yeah, after the show... Yeah, after the show is when the real fire... So, was. like... <laughs> what? Well, like, Just first the off... the people, bro. The fucking people there. So, Stoner closes out the show... And you know, people usually just get up and like they point out like, hey, we're over here and like in the merch corner, say bye to us and all that type of stuff, right? So mm -hmm. Stoner does this beautiful pitch, man. Now I get why he gets like booked at those like conventions and like festivals and stuff because he has that voice and the energy to be a host, right? Right. Uh -huh. Bro, he gets them all hyped up for the merch and then lights go on, music goes, dog, they all just sit there. Dude, they sat there for a good like 10, 12 minutes. And we're just, nobody got we're just up. standing by the booth. <laughs> just standing. <laughs> We're just sitting there. You know why? Because there's nothing to do in that town, bro. The show's over. Like, like oh, we, we don't want to go home right don't don't, leave. They don't want to leave. Like, this is our this is our life, guys. This is it. We had set oh. up our merch, and I'm like, oh. I don't even know why we did this. Yeah, and but then they started coming, bro. They started coming to okay. the table. They said, "What's up?" This lady wanted a shirt, but we didn't. Kraz didn't have no uh, like size. Yeah, ten X. <laughs> oh my god that's a nice way of saying that really yeah <laughs> no she needed, was like, she needed at least a three she was a bigger oh, woman okay. but she did have very large breasts which when you're putting on a shirt you have to get them over that and stuff so it could be a little tough. she tried on like the three x that kratz had and like it, just, it was just like a it just a, a shirt just says do yeah. just talk do, <laughs> do all stretching and talk <laughs> So she's like, oh, yeah, I, I want this so bad, but I oh, can't get it. And then she went back to her table. And then she's like going to leave, and we make eye contact. And she's like, oh, and walks over. And at the time she walks over, her friend was buying a shirt. Yeah, dog. And she bought the same size. And she was like, 
uh, she's like, it's a little tight on me, but you know, maybe it'll inspire me to go on a diet. I'm like, there you go. We made a joke, blah, blah, blah. And then the other lady, original lady came back and she's like, fuck, I want this shirt so bad. All right, let me get one. I'll go on a diet too. Cause it was crazy. Like, so like the, the room was split like in half because there was like this whole pole in the middle. <laughs> Right, uh-huh. so it was like the last supper supper table on the left, and on the right was like all these couples and stuff. It was all those people that actually came to the like to the merch table and shit. The couples, yeah, oh, right. yeah, they like they enjoyed the show, man. It was dope, yeah. But yeah, we sold some merch, bro. It was cool. It wasn't like all of a loss. You know what I'm saying? As long as they're saying that they'll go on the diet, you know, because if you're trying to sell, oh, you could say you skin on diet, it's going to the diet. <laughs> yeah. the matter is it crazy? How they perspective? Like if you said that, that would be like the worst thing. But bro, they're saying it. Like so, then, then we're getting like ready to leave. Them. Stoner pays us, and then he walks out of the kitchen. He's got a Corona, a burrito, <laughs> and then like some like, like what's like, wrong with that? Like, like mini painting. He had a big it's like, ass. It's like, like a, I don't know what the Just walked out are. with the painting. Dog. He's got like a, just a little painting on his arm. And I'm like, dude, is Stoner Rob getting paid in art? Like, what the <laughs> fuck is it? What kind of deal does he have? He, he was like a fucking Cobra Kai when Mike Barnes steals Bro. the Rembrandt. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> no, man. So, like. Like, art's going to pay you. And you know, like. I'm, I'm looking for art. I was right there. When we, you know, when we go to like, we go and do shows, like, I want to go and check out shit, right? One of my goals, like, was to go and check out, like, a casino in Perum. Just want to see, like, what the environment is like. You know what I'm saying? All right. So we didn't get a chance to go up because, like, we're running a little bit, like, we're running on time, actually. And then, like, we're like, now nah, let's, let's not, like, risk it for whatever reason, you know? Because, like, there ain't no streetlights, bro, in Perum, dog. So it's like, you're just driving in blackness the whole fucking time. So we, like, we finally pull up to, like, a, a casino, dog. And it's like they're wild, wild west, dog. But like, like, dude, it looks huge. Look massive. Isn't that where all the brothels are out there too? Because it's legal out there, right? I, I yeah, know I there's mean, some, but I don't know, I don't where. know That's all I know about Pahrump. Yeah, Cherry Patch Ranch or whatever yeah. that. They always talk about that yeah. when I was younger. Like, oh, go there. It was all in Pahrump? Yeah, it was all Pahrump. Oh, shit, dog. Next time, bro. Yeah. That's where Lamar Odom got all fucked up. Wasn't it, it that was Bunny Pahrump. Ranch? Yeah, I think so. It was in Pahrump. Wait, so the Bunny Ranch and all that shit, that's in Pahrump? Yeah, that's all in Pahrump. Oh, I thought it was like way deep, like past North Vegas type oh, of shit. Oh, yeah. No, no. uh No way. So they had to fly him in a helicopter to like a hospital out here because there's nothing out there. Right. Yeah, no, yeah, right. Ain't yeah. shit out there. It's pretty desolate. That's crazy. I didn't Just know that all that shit was in Pahrump, and... though. That explains why they have all these weird ass casinos and shit because there's all these like creeps that are out there in Pahrump. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, dog, like, we... We go up in there. I'm like, the all right, man. Like, like, hump the perump. Hump the perump. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, they have no tables in their casinos. It's all slot machines, right? Oh. And then they got, like, a sports book, but their sports book is, like, ran by some independent dude. Like, it's just, it's not like, it's not like a William Hill or anything like that, right? Right. It's like John's betting app. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's so weird. Oh, right? it's an app, too? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's an app, but this sports book was literally a TV and a desk. <laughs> and yeah. a chalkboard? <laughs> no, I, I don't even know if there was No, they didn't even have a board, bro. Wow. Like, I think he did everything from like an iPad or yeah, something. Yeah, it was, or a fucking it was fucking sketch. weird, bro. <laughs> And we talked to the security guard, and the security guard was like, yeah, they know tables, only like the Golden Nugget. I was like, oh, I was like, the Golden Nugget. I was like, I was like, oh, I think that's where one of the bonkers, like, uh, their venues are in there, right? Mm-hmm. Or some shit. I forgot which one. But anyway, so then like, so 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 then we're like, all right, let's get the fuck out of this town, right? It was like, it was like all weird. And like, uh, so we we go, and then like, we're like, all right, let's grab some snacks for the road. You know what I'm saying? So we go to this gas station, bro. And it was like, we walk up in there, just me and Kraz at first, right? Then like these other two like I don't know I don't know like they these two other people walk up in there right and like they all look kind of grimy you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. kind of grimy yeah like they look kind of so grimy nice and then so like they're like bouncing around everywhere and the and like the the clerk is like watching right and he's like just and then he's like he's like telling them where stuff is and shit because they legit were food shopping and the guys they yeah. bought so much wow. shit like so much shit right you ever see those people who grocery shop is 7-eleven yeah. like bro i'm just trying to get a fucking one but, thing but right. as fast as they're going it was like they, they won like you know like those like countdown like shopping sweepstakes where they're uh, like yeah, here's a cart and, get, yeah. and put whatever is in your cart that's what you get to take that's that how it went down like that yeah so like so then, like, they go and check out, they leave, and then, like, randomly, this, this guy just, he, the clerk just announces to me and Kraz, like, you know, if you steal something in this store, you know, like, even a Snickers bar, I could shoot you, right? And we're like, what? 
Like, and then he's like, I'm always carrying and stuff, right? And then Kraz goes, oh, that's kind of like a weird thing to say, right? right? Yeah. And then he goes, you ever shot anyone? And he goes, oh, I shoot people all the time. <laughs> and then like Kraz he looks was so down. Proud. He like looks down at the floor like, oh, fuck, like someone probably got shot right here, you know? <laughs> he takes a snicker bar out of his pocket. <laughs> he's like, oh, yeah. I'm I, the one that I made believe that this is yours. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right, let's 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 get the candy out of the pockets now, bro. But It's like my cousin Vinny. Uh, he was, and then what was he talking about? He was talking about like these people that was like robbing and prompt and shit. Like, yeah, he's like, uh, over on Halloween, there's a couple of gas stations at a smoke shop and there were a group of 12 people and they all broke up on like threes. And they just robbed certain places around here. Mm. And he's like, but I didn't get touched because they know my reputation. Yeah. No. <laughs> and I'm like, jeez, bro. Yeah. This guy's like Clint Eastwood from Gran Torino. Yeah. <laughs> get off my wall. And then as we're leaving, we're like, all right, man. Like, he, we're like, we're like, hopefully you don't have to shoot no one. And he was like, oh, I hope I do. It was like, <laughs> it was like he just said some weird shit like that. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, so that's basically Pahrump in, 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 in a nutshell. In a, in a shotgun shell. In a crazy nutshell. <laughs> yeah, a nutshell bro. and a shotgun in shell. shell. Pahrump is though. a special place. I've done that show three times, and I'll do it a fourth. Hell yeah, it's, dog. it's fun, man. It's, it's such a fun experience. It yeah, because you get the loose. People there. You get, it's, a, it's a nice little break up from Vegas. Yeah, bro. And stuff like that. You're so used to the same thing. You go to prom and you're like, oh, geez. Like, it's a good challenge. You don't, too, even, you know, know you don't even realize you're still in Nevada. You dig? I felt like we were back in Mississippi. It's like the hills yeah. have eyes. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, the hills have uh, fucking cross eyes. That's a great comparison. Though. It, it, it was like Mississippi, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if it makes any kind of list of places to travel. Like, well, Pahrump. Like Vegas the, is probably a destination. For the horse, Go like YouTube <laughs> top ten travel destinations, and they're like number four, uh, Pahrump. Like, do they have conventions there? Like, well, yeah. the the of the yeah. big hotel. The hotel we went to, it looked huge. They probably had, the but it was small ball. on the inside, and they had a convention center. That's why it was uh-huh. so big. So I, mean, oh, I don't yeah. know what kind of Pahrump could probably guns, politics, or fireworks because that's all they do out there. Yeah, it was weird. But yeah, yeah gun show man. But uh, yeah, yeah. no, Pahrump's, uh, Pahrump's cool. it's, it's a very fun show. Stone and Rob puts it on. It's cool. Yeah. It's got free tacos. Yeah, bro. That's great, dog. I Damn. didn't get a painting, though. Next time Rob's like, yo, you want to do the show? I'm like, yeah, but I need my regular pay, and I want whatever <laughs> painting you got. Yeah. I want some artwork, bro. I'm fucking up my game. Yeah, I want my tally bit. plush, bro. We're going to go back. I'm going to win that shit again. It's like a refrigerator magnet. Like, can you go out of town? You get it in from where? But oh, we were trying to find park. a refrigerator. Yeah, we magnet. did. We went to the that hotel. We went to. We thought there was a gift shop. So she was like, "Fuck, we we'll go get a prompt magnets." Yeah. Right. But it it wasn't really like a gift shop. It was just like when you go check in, they have like all the toiletries and a vending machine and yeah. stuff like that that you need. It wasn't like fucking welcome the beautiful prompt. I wish. Bro. Established fucking eight thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fucking town that time forgot. I'm interesting. Uh, it'd be to look up the history of why that town got any exists or how does it. Oh no, man! Because a lot of times when they travel from one part of the United States to the other, they just start people's shit break down and then they end up starting a town or you know what I mean and they move on. But Pahrump seems to be like one of those because it's not it's not a major city at all like Barstow like. Right, right. Or one of those, you know. Well, what I mean? even out there, like in the valleys, like how the fuck do these people even make it out here, you know? Yeah. And then just accepted it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I'd love to know some of these people's backstories. Well, um, yeah. Oh, look at that. It says Prom was uh, settlers. Settlers in the 19th century. That's where they were. Oh, okay. That's where they went. They just stopped there and they're like, here looks good. Yeah, I guess they're trying to build something in the valley. Oh, it's because they you could ranch out in that area. They had like the better weather oh. for like cotton and livestock. Oh, okay. Yeah, bro. See, you Shit, guys that's not practical now. Very educational here on the ESJ <laughs> podcast. You guys get a little bit of history of Pahrump. Well, I thought you guys might have studied that or l- looked it up before you went and did the show, but you've already done it four times and you don't even know about the town. Yeah. That'd give you more material to talk about, I guess. Yeah, well. Well, there you have it. I googled Pahrump, and they were like, we haven't found any results. <laughs> so it was hard to... It was hard to do. 
the negative energy on this guy. Just <laughs> wait, great way to sum it, sum, uh, bring bring the shit back together. Bro. Yeah, but I tried to keep it low key. <laughs> oh man! All right, man. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the ESJ podcast. You can listen to us on Spotify. Check us out Apple TV and uh, YouTube. Do you guys have YouTube and Spotify and Param? Because if you do, check us out. Yeah, and if you don't, I guess you can't. If you don't, then I guess you can't hear us make fun of your shitty town. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. It's a great place. It is cool. It's a fun place. Bro, they didn't have telephone service until like the 1970s, so they used to use radio transmitters the whole time. Oh, they probably ham even, radio. They probably didn't even know Vegas was even like in existence, bro. They never came over across the mountains, you know what I'm saying? Dude, the right. gas station we went to where the dude wanted to shoot people had two pay phones out front. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to use them. I changed my car. I was going to call you, your yeah. cell phone, from the payphone. Yeah. Oh. And be like, what are you, why are you calling me? But like, I'm calling from the past. <laughs> <laughs> you know these fucking payphones, but I tried doing it. There was no dial tone, so yeah, I couldn't even, couldn't even call you, bro. I probably wouldn't have picked up, bro. I don't pick up numbers I don't recognize. You know yeah. what? Oh, you know what? You guys ever watched that movie, uh, The Village or whatever, from the M.I. Shamla? You know what I'm saying? Because that's the exact same thing. Like they lived in this like like off the grid area, and then when they needed medicine, they sent out that blind chick to go through the forest, and they made up this whole story about how there's like werewolves and shit. And so like they that's how they kept all the people within like within that small ass town. But then when they, she broke free, it was like it was like you know how cities are developed now and shit. That's how it is for them, bro. Like all right, oh, my bad. Dude, Sean's one- like let's wrap it up, guys. Oh my god, they got werewolves over there. Dude, the one, the one time he makes a movie <laughs> reference, he ruins the episode. Yeah. <laughs> great job, kidding. Sean. <laughs> fucking great, Sean. See, now we gotta re-edit this whole fucking shit. That's the friend part of Sean, <laughs> not the producer part. <laughs> oh, Sean's never gonna make a movie reference again. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, thanks for. Uh, that's, that came to a screeching halt. <laughs> Come check out our shows. Uh, we're at the V Theater. <laughs> ESJ fan promo code. Uh, email us if you like. ESJ podcast. Check our graphics. Gmail. Yes, sir. Oh, and uh, we'll oh. catch you later. Man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs>the one time bro and then he waits till afterwards and then he said cut yeah the one time bro man (laughs) awesome asshole it's fucked up yo it's like I don't know what the fuck he's talking about that was the highlight of the whole episode right there (laughs) shit that's pretty much what Pahrump was (laughs) alright